Welcome. In today's lesson, we'll be discussing the why of programming by reviewing mnemonics and having a discussion that relates to the following topics. We're going to start by talking about first class functions. We're going to define what it means to be first class in the sense of a function. Then we're going to talk about nesting functions. We're going to talk about what the syntax looks like to do that. We're also going to talk about an important concept called closure. We're going to talk about what it is and why it's so important to understand our environmental boundaries. So remember, the average freight train is about one to one and a quarter miles long. That's 90 to 120 rail cars. Now our first mnemonic is going to be a first class seat on a luxury airplane and this represents the topic of a first class function. And the reason why I thought it made a good mnemonic is when you're a first class passenger in an airplane, they treat you well. You can do, for the most part, whatever you want. When you're a first class function, you're not limited like regular functions. You can do everything that a Python object can do. Okay, so what is a first class function more programmatically? Well, a first class function is a function, like the same ones that we've looked at before, except you can think of it more as a contained object because it is an object in Python. And that means it can do all sorts of things normal functions cannot. It can be passed into another function as an argument, for example. It can be stored inside of a variable. And it can even be returned from another function. It can, a function can be a return from another function. So you can do a lot of cool things. And these are all tools we can use to build more complex and more interesting programs. So our next mnemonic is going to be a Russian nesting doll that has many little dolls inside of it. And it's going to represent the topic of nesting. I think my reasoning for this mnemonic is pretty self-explanatory, but it's a great visual. Like these nesting dolls, functions can be contained inside of each other. So when we first make a function, of course, we have to define it with a name. Our DEF, then we have a space, and then a name for the function. So when we call this, we always use the parentheses. So when we define a function with our DEF, we always have to give it a unique name. Now, when we do this, we also have the exact series of characters that we're going to need when we call it, except we add the parentheses on the outside. Now, when you call this name and you don't use the parentheses, which tells it that we could be passing in an argument and to call it as a function and execute the code, it just acts like a variable. It will give you back very similar returns. But when you call it with the parentheses, then you actually execute all that code and you may or may not get a return depending on how the function is built. So when we're talking about nesting a function, we're talking about having both the definition, the logic inside the definition, and the call all nested inside of a function. So we have a function and where its logic is, we're defining another function and calling that function. And you know we can continue down that rabbit hole, but essentially the whole thing is packaged inside. Our next mnemonic is one of my favorite to imagine. It's the Apollo 11 space capsule, and it represents the topic of closure. And I chose this as the mnemonic because it's a tricky thing to actually visualize in a real way, because it's like taking a package, but then when you close the package, the entire environment around it goes in there with it. Almost like when you close the package, it all like sucks in. So you could imagine in a sense that if you had a piece of Tupperware, which would represent our function in this case, and it was inside of the space capsule, the Apollo 11, and you wanted to deliver this Tupperware to somebody, you couldn't take it out. You would have to deliver the entire environment. I think of this space capsule as grabbing a piece of Earth's environment, like where we have oxygen and things that are more conducive for humans, and then we take the capsule into space and we stay inside that capsule. That's the environment that we're kind of in. So it would be like giving that Tupperware to somebody and having to include the entire environment around it. So a little bit abstract, but it means that what's in the package when you open it has a reference to everything else that was outside of it when the package was closed. It's like taking a snapshot and then putting it all in the package with it, or it maybe delivering the entire environment along with the package to somebody. So what's closure programmatically speaking? Well, closure is when we package a function together with a snapshot of all of the variables that it has around it in its environment, its scope. So Imagine you have opened up like a brand new Jupyter notebook and then you make a variable and then you make a function. Now that variable is outside of the function so things inside the function won't have access to it. But if you were to put closure around your function, it can check anything in the area around it. That stuff's all packaged together. 
So when we're talking about closure, we're not necessarily saying that those variables are inside the function, but we have access to them because the function, when it's packaged, is capturing those variables through the closure's reference to them, even when the function invoked is outside of their scope. So our next mnemonic might be one that not everyone's familiar with, so I'm going to explain, but it's Rick's microverse battery from the TV show Rick and Morty, and it's going to represent the topic of a decorator. Now, normally I like to make mnemonics something that we're all familiar with, and I know not everybody's as big of a Rick and Morty fan as I am, so let me just explain this to you, because it's really the best analogy I could think of. So in Rick and Morty, there is a TV show where there's this guy, Rick, and he's like a kind of mad scientist, super genius. And he creates an entire universe that's inside of a box, about the size of a car battery. Also, if you've seen Men in Black and you know that little marble that has like an entire universe inside of it with planets and civilizations and all that stuff, it's kind of the same concept. Now that box is self-containing a civilization. There's a planet with people on it, or aliens, and they're in there creating energy. They have a society, the society uses energy, and it creates energy. So he's taking some of this energy out of the box, and then he's powering his car with it. So it's his car battery. It gives him tremendous power because he has an entire civilization in there that's working and living and, and adapting and growing, and all of that energy is powering the car. So the way to think about these decorators as a mnemonic is the function is this box, this battery that has a whole universe in it and all these people. It does all these things. It doesn't matter how complicated it is. Uh, billions of stars, not a problem. Trillions of stars, not a problem. It all fits inside this box. That's your function. Now, a decorator is like one more thing that you add on top of it. Decorators usually aren't terribly complicated. They can hold multiple lines of logic, but they're usually like do all this, return something like energy in the Rick and Morty analogy, and then use that to power the car, or uh, add 10 to that number, and then send it off, or um, put a little API key in it, and then shoot it off so we don't have to do that every single time. So a decorator is a way to just add a little bit of functionality to an already existing function, and it's also a way to think about nested functions, because the function, just like a nested function, does all its logic, and then is inside of this kind of decorator, which is a small function that wraps it and does one final thing to it. Okay, so what's a decorator? Well, a decorator, it wraps a function. We can think of them as a special new function that is being passed in a previous function. It accepts another function as its argument, and then it does one more layer of processing. However, there's one big caveat to this. Now, the syntax doesn't look like a normal function. You would think of a function being passed into a function as, you know, the DEF, the name, the open close parentheses, and the colon, and then the name of the function being passed in. But in this case, we do have a normal function created, but when we're calling it, all we need to use is the at symbol right above where the function definition is. So that's something to look for in the next video. The examples will help a lot with that. And it's nice because this at sign symbolizes to Python that you want to alter the code after it's executed. So just by putting the at symbol and then the name to your decorator function, Python knows. Take the return and then pass it into this other decorator function to get the modified result. And the cool thing is because we now know about closure, this new decorator function also has read access to the outer environment variables that it was packaged with, even though they were inside of the inner function. So that's just one more thing to think about as we start stacking all this together and creating amazing code. Now, first mnemonic was on a luxury airplane, a first class seat, and it represented a first class function. We learned that first class functions are functions in Python, all of them, because they're all objects, and they come with the powers of objects, being able to be passed into each other, nested inside of functions. Functions inside of functions are a possibility with these first class functions. And then our next mnemonic was a set of Russian nesting dolls, and this represented the topic of nesting functions. And then we talked about the way you might want to pass these things in when you're nesting functions. We talked about how a function, when it's written without the parentheses, is going to be treated just like a variable. And then when it is given the parentheses at the end, then it's going to run like a function and execute that code and give you your return. Our next mnemonic was the Apollo 11 space capsule, and it represented the topic of closure. So we touched on closure, which is a really fascinating topic where we think about the thing that we package, the function that we package, as being able to 
take a snapshot of all the variables around it and bring those into the environment as if you opened a package and it actually brought the entire room that it was in. So if you like, imagine you opened like a time capsule from 1950s and then all of a sudden you looked around and it was 1950 and all of the things that in the room were somehow around you. So that's the way to think about that. And then finally we learned about Rick's microverse battery and how it represents the topic of a decorator. And the first thing we might have learned in this section was what Rick's microverse battery even was if you're not a Rick and Morty fan. But once we got past that, we learned that decorators wrap a function. They add one more layer of logic to a function. And we learned that they have a special syntax that's easily identifiable when you look at Python code with the at sign. So now let's pull up our trusty Jupyter Notebook and start looking at examples of these ideas expressed in code. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.